What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Bolero. Sam here with Gab and Maui. Say hi, boys. Hello. Let's go. Go, Ateneo. What a game. What a game. Yeah. Freaking Amos. Okay, what a game. So it's 11.30 p.m. Uh, on October 4. These two just came from the watching from Moa, watching the games. Uh, but we're doing this podcast because we have to talk about the games today. And we also have to shout out to our subscribers. So before we talk about the what we're going to discuss today, obviously we're going to talk about all four games. Uh, just a few things that I want to share. Number one. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all our subscribers, our listeners out there, and all our friends that shared uh, the podcast, the link to our YouTube invited friends. We've finally hit 1,000 subscribers after, what, three three seasons. You know, we started this season 84, uh, start of season 86, finally hit 1K subscribers. To, so thank you to all our subscribers, to our supporters, friends, family. We really appreciate you. Second, congrats, by the way, to Chini. Siya yung nanalo dun sa giveaway natin to the upper box tickets for Ateneo versus Lasal. Hopefully, you enjoyed it as much as we did. And one last, shout out to Gilas Pilipinas who made it to the finals of the Asian Games this, this evening, beating China by one point. I think yeah. down tie 20 points or something. We were know? down 20 at one point. Pero the Justin Brownlee show started no fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Congratulations mm-hmm. to Gilas. This is actually, I think, the, their first medal. Since we're already in the finals, we are sure of a, a minimum of a silver medal. So this is their first silver medal champion, silver medal win for the Asian Games since, I think, early 2000s, either 2002 or 2003. After the fiasco oh. ng World Cup, this is a big positive in my opinion. Uh, at least we performed well in itong Asian Games. It was uh, just too bad. Malapit na, malapit na sa na UAAP. Yeah, it's too bad. <laughs> uh, I think people don't really care that much Asian Games anymore sa basketball. Just because uh, the Asian Games is not covered by FIBA, uh, the qualifications before for the Olympics or FIBA World was was through the Asian Games. But right now, it's just a basketball tournament for glory in Asia. But still, uh, we like to acknowledge Gilas and congratulate, especially Coach Tim Cohn, for getting them to the finals. I mean, this is an accomplishment that we haven't done for the past two decades. And we did it despite all the negativity after the World Cup. And, and I think this team only had, like, what, one week? Two weeks of training, <laughs> diba? Parang ganun yung naging issue. Sanay na. Sanay na. Sanay. What's Sanay new? Na. What's Sanay new, what's bro? Itong dalawa. <laughs> Tengi, tenga, positive tayo. Sinasabi natin, congrats, by the way. Tama na. Move on na tayo. Move on na tayo. So, okay. For today's topic, baka nakita nyo na sa title of this video. Uh, instead of doing our quick reactions to each and every game, since apat yung games natin, we're going to do an overreaction. So, Gab, Maui, I'm going to ask you to fill in the blank and overreact to this statement. So, it's just two games, but blank. So, each team, they've all played two games already. So, I want Gab and Maui to share their overreaction so far based on the two games that you've seen uh, this, this season. So, let's start with you, Gab. What's your uh, first overreaction? Okay, it's just two games, but the NU Bulldogs are the number two team in this uh, in the whole UAAP. Oh, even over Lasal, they're the number two team. They're I think they're the top contender to UP for the title after just two games. Uh, they have looked impressive. Uh, we men- we talked about the game on Saturday where they absolutely demolished. Ateneo, I, this team is full of veterans and they play very composed. They play organized basketball. They play tough defense. And in the game earlier against FEU, they showed that they're not just about 
uh, Kian Baklan isolations in the fourth quarter in in crunch time. That was the issue last season, especially against UP. Uh, when the defense tightens up, they just go to Kian Baklan and just depend on him to make every play. Um, not anymore. That's not the case anymore. Their additions in the offseason, we talked about it the whole preseason. Can these additions uh, lighten the load on Kian Baklaan and perhaps create more opportunities, more shooting for this team? And it has proven that these additions can actually work. They, Coach Jeff Napa has exclusively played two guards, two point guards at the same time throughout the entire two games. It's either uh, Baklaan or Don Lim, Baklaan, Patrick Yu, Patrick Yu, Don Lim, Baklaan, Steve Nash, Enriquez. There's always been two ball handers on the floor who can make plays, who can shoot the ball. And I'm all for it. They have looked really good. Their defense has been spectacular. Um, and, not, and not just that, we, all, we also talked about you after last season. If they're ever going to make the leap to being a contender, the veterans have to improve internally. They have to improve their games individually. And they have. Uh, Maui shouted out Steve Nash Enriquez. He's been shooting threes more consistently and making them more. So uh, that's a, Yes. And he's been scoring better. And that's something that they need desperately. Uh, I'm still kind of disappointed that they still use PJ Palacello as a backup center. I think he could be used more as a power <laughs> forward. But... <laughs> Kenshin Padrones has been a pleasant surprise. He's been very good as a stretch four alongside Omar John. Um, and their their wings have shown improved games as well. Uh, Jolo Manansala shooting more threes. Not making them at a high clip, but he's shooting more. Uh, Michael Malonzo, he's not the starting power forward anymore, which I think is the right position for him. He can't be a power forward exclusively. Eh? He, he's 6'2", he's 6'3". Six two, six two, six he's very small for that position. So I agree with playing Kenshin Padrones there. Um, and as shown in the game earlier also against FEU, they can play small and not be punished for it. And that's the weapon that they have in PJ Palacello. PJ Palacello was playing against a small ball lineup of FEU a while ago and he wasn't getting beat off the dribble. We talked about this Sam, no, no off season. He looks slimmer. Uh, he looks like he's bought up in in muscle, and he's faster. He's quicker. He can he can play on the perimeter. So uh, play small against them. Play big against them. They can they can hang. What I'm excited for Saturday. I think it's UP versus NU on Saturday. Magkakalaman na. I, I'm going to tune into that game. I'm going to be watching that game. And I think everyone who watches this show should watch that game. UP versus NU. That's a game. That's a must-see game. Uh, after that uh, game, no. is, after that game, isang team na lang matitira na undefeated. So after that game, we'll yeah, find out that's crazy. who will this early. stay at 3-0. Who will stay at 3-0. Um... Yeah, just quick reaction to that, Gab. I actually don't think that's an overreaction. I I agree with that statement. Uh, had a similar note here. Uh, I'm not gonna ask Maui because I don't want Maui to spoil the power rankings. Niya. So, uh, Maui, I know you're working on your new power rankings. Watch out for that. We'll be posting mm. that soon. Uh, but Maui, you anong overreaction mo. It's just two games, but... Yeah, uh, I think I just want to comment lang on, on NU first. Uh, I think Gab's statements are warranted. Um, but uh, I'm really shouting out two players, two key players uh, NU that I think elevated their style of play. Gab mentioned first si Steve Nash. Yeah. I think the added three-point shot has been good. Uh, he can now... Now, perimeter players cannot sag off him. He can drive into the lane easily. And I think that has been really good for NU. You saw how they decimated yung, yung defense ng Ateneo to the point that they had to play zone just because of these guards. Um, the next thing that I want to call out is si Kian Baklaan. Um, the Kian Baklaan we saw last year was a scoring Kian Baklaan. When NU struggled, just give the ball to Kian, then Kian will create and 
shoot crazy shots, crazy long three-point shots. The Kian Baklaan, we've seen this past two games is an all-around Kian Baklaan. I think yun talaga yung next step sa kanya. He is a better facilitator. Very he, mature na yung game niya, Maui. Very mature. Yes, very mature. I think, I think kahit siya naman sinabi niya nung, nung first game nila when, when they had a pre-game parang short interview. Silang dalawa ni Steve Nash nag interview Um, they have really matured and it shows. Uh, this is their first real of this Kian Baklaan's first real off season with Jeff Napa. Uh, he arrived at NU. We all know he was supposed to play for UST. He arrived at NU at the last minute, so yung training time was yeah. limited. And now we see a different dimension of Kian Baklaan. It, it has done wonders for, for NU's offense, for that matter. I think there were times, kasi last year, that many people would say, Dupang, Atuati, Wakao, si... Kian Baklaan. But the Kian Baklaan this year, he picks his spots, he rebounds the ball with, with that small height. Shout out to Miko Lili and his minions. Um, but for me, talaga yung facilitating has been a lot. Uh, he doesn't need to score 10 points. That was evident nung Ateneo game for NU to compete. So yeah, I think Gab's statements was warranted. For my overreaction, uh, it's just two games, but I think Ateneo is a contender. Just because of my high from the game a while ago, I think <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys will say, you guys. Sa will say, na ba? At the name, pick uh, eh. yeah. you guys Just so say, you guys know, this is the first UAAP game that Maui has attended in four years. Yes, in four years. Four years. Four That's years. why he's high. This is the first UAAP Ateneo game I have attended in four years. From 2003 to 2019, I did not miss any official UAAP game. Phil Oil, all the other wow. yung mga summer leagues, I missed Ateneo Lasal game. But from 2013 to 2019, for sure, minimum two twice a year, I would watch them. So, sa UAAP. This is my first Ateneo Lasal game in four years. So, post-pandemic. First time din namin makita in person ni Maui in four years. <laughs> yeah, in at least four years, the, the gap. Actually, yung buddy namin, we, we shout out to Nico Rocha. Uh, I, I finally met him also in person for the first time. Shout yung reaction niya niya is okay. sabi eh, yung reaction niya, baka pati si Lagab, hindi mo pa nang meet in person. Sabi ko, gago, ka, ano ko yun? Kabatch ko naman yung dalawa nung high school. So, so <laughs> we, we go way back. Uh, but, but yeah, uh, magalit na kayo't lahat sa akin. Uh, I think the previous off-season, season 85, I was that lone person. They called me a homer. I mentioned Ateneo as a title contender. And I'm mentioning again, this season that Ateneo is a title contender. At the very least, they will fight for the number two slot. Uh, I think I put them in the power rankings at number three. I think it's viable for them to finish number three or even higher, number two. Uh, the opening day game against NU is similar to how they performed the opening, opening ng summer. Uh, if you watch Ateneo, they started out the fill oil at 0 and 5. They lost to all UAP teams. Um, but they bounced back and won, I think, 20 plus games. Nung, nung summer. And this statement game against Lasal, uh, when they won against Lasal kanina, every, if you were at MOA, uh, kitang-kita mo, kahit sa TV, I think I was watching yung highlights at the end of the game, they mentioned, and daming green compared to blue. That's very uncommon uh. for UAP. There was a whole section sa likod ng green gab. I don't know if you saw it, 201, 202. I think in your tickets na allocated sa Blue Eagle Gym. It was empty nung first two quarters. So, talagang maraming atinista <laughs> did not expect to win. So, they didn't bother to go to MOA because it's a Wednesday, it's a work day. Shun the non-believers. It's a shame on you. <laughs> so, I'm saying now what I've been saying the past two or three seasons in tab with trust. So, I think Ateneo, much like any season, will have a chance at the very least to compete. For a final four, uh, for a top two slot this season. Um, that game against NU, kalimutan nyo na. Mga Tineo fans namin na nanonood. Kalimutan nyo na. Kalimutan nyo na. We got a win against Lasal. At, uh, a pre-season, pre-season title contender. Uh, it can be that Lasal is a fake title contender or it can be that Ateneo has really bounced back. And I think it's the latter part. I don't think Lasal is going to perform as, as bad as they were this this coming this season uh yung friends ko nga sabi after yung some of my friends topex is shaking 
You guys are crazy. <laughs> You're saying that the Topex is, cra- is shaking. It's one game. It's one loss to Ateneo. Similar to Ateneo's loss to Enyo. It's painful. But they have to move on. I think si Naveen Ganglani tweeted yung pressure ng, ng Lasal. Um, it was different compared to previous seasons when they lost. Uh, the KQ, KQ and uh, Coach Topex was the one interviewed. They were upbeat. They wanted to focus on the next games. Uh, they have to move on if they want to to be a contender. This is just one game in 14 games. They, they of all teams, should realize that losing against a top team such as Ateneo, top team na talaga, siyempre, uh, is nothing. If you can't beat the other team. Ibang <laughs> klase yung roller coaster of emotions, <laughs> Mawawi. <laughs> yeah, ibang yeah, klase, ibang klase. But, but I'm saying Lasal has to move on. Lasal Lili has to move on because they know, they should know. Last year, they won against Ateneo, then they lost two games against the final four contenders. So, yeah, that's my that's take. True. I think really, at the, this game solidified. <laughs> All preseason, I was asking, if you guys watched our previous episodes, I was asking, how will Ateneo make the Mason Amos Balungay combo work? Coach Tab unleashed it on Lasal this last four minutes, and they performed spectacularly. That lineup uh, really decimated the defense of Lasal. They didn't know who to, to, who to cover. And it led to easy three-pointers and an easy dunk by, by Lungay. Uh, shout out to Chris Kuhn for finally coming out of the cocoon. Uh, I think he's finally healthy. He has his first big game as an Atenean. This is, I think this is his best, best game in his three years as an Atenean. Uh, from the get-go, I think some of my friends said, uh, iba yung ora ni Balungay, iba yung ora ni Kuhn. They know that they had to step up from the get-go. Because of their performance ng first game. So yeah, uh, batukan niya na ako at lahat. Sabihin niya ng bias ako. I think Ateneo is a contender. <laughs> Sam. Okay, oh, hey, you heard it. A, a, you heard it from the... You heard it from the Prophet. Uh, Prophet Maui, no? Uh, another prediction na Ateneo is going to contend, contend this season. Uh, alam mo, Maui... Let me connect yung sinabi ni Gab na NU and UP are the top two teams. So I, I, I'm going to have to disagree. Kasi I agree with Gab, NU and UP are the top two teams. So I would like, if I were to overreact, sasabihin ko it's just two games. But I think Lasal and Ateneo are both busts. Clearly Whoa. for me, parang after, after two games, That's a huge swing. for me. Whoa. That's a huge after swing two... from, from last oh. year. Na title oh. contender mo Lasal. Yeah. So 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 for me after two games malayo na malayo mas magaling NU and UP from these two teams kasi these are the four teams that we were talking about could contend diba these are the four final four teams na pinag-uusapan namin natin during the preseason but i guess similar to Gab i think NU and UP they're well coached they have a deep team and, and like just just the two games, basing off the two games, they've been beating the other teams badly. And I would say Lasal, obviously Ateneo is a bust because they lost to NU during the first game. And sa Lasal naman, on Lasal's end, by I, a lot, I yeah, uh, by a lot, they lost by a lot. Ateneo. And then on Lasal's end, I mean this as a compliment. Wag kayo magreact Lasal, kasi para sa akin, bust Lasal because I cannot believe how Ateneo slipped through this game and won this game. As in, I was really not expecting Ateneo to win this game. I was just as ex- hoping that Ateneo could keep it close. And there's a point during the third quarter, we couldn't score Grabe for like what, five, to. six minutes. Sobrang pessimistic naman five, Sammy Santos. Five, six minutes, hindi tayo makascore. Tapos, we were talking about it before we recorded, di ba? Naiipit tayo nung press ng Lasal, eh, nung defense. So, you know, I, I thought Lasal was gonna break away, to be honest. After nung nag, umabot na ng 9, nung nine, third, yeah, I thought Lasal points. was gonna break away. So, <laughs> medyo hindi ako makapaniwala na nananalo yung Ateneo dito. So, so that's just my reaction to it, Maui. Uh, but, ito yung, ito yung tunay ko na overreaction. It's just two wait, games... Wait, wait, I... I'll say, go, I, just, go, I just want to say something. Uh, so <laughs> both of you had very overreactions. Very over, over. Yeah. Si, si Maui, contender. At We're overreacting. Si Sammy, That's bust. the ano, team. 
I don't know, but if if, if I were to side with one of you guys uh, over the Astros, I, 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 I'd go with Maui. Uh, I I think we have to... You know, hindi naman discount the NU game, but more of uh, my asterisk. I think yun yung experimentation game ni Tabe. Honestly, Titan yeah. starting fight he, wasn't expected. You know, I, they, I told yun, this yun, to Maui yun. when we saw each other. He completely... He didn't completely. He changed three people in the starting five. Look back since 2016, Coach Tab Baldwin has never changed his starting five ever from the first game of the season to the last game of the season. Coach Tab has never changed his starting five. He has stuck with the same five guys every single game. This is the first time he's ever done it. And he replaced three players. I think that tells you enough of how much he experimented in the first game. Uh, I think this rotation uh, will stick. This five will stick. I think this is the this is the lineup that gives them the better chance or to produce on offense. Because really, it's an offense that you nag struggle. Eh. Uh, when Chris Kuhn or Kai Balungay are is not are not on the floor, they have no playmakers at all, and they struggle to find shots. Uh, Ian Espinosa. Um, Damn, how many shot lock violations <laughs> did Jung happen when he was on the court? But yeah, we talked about Chris Kuhn Maui, and I think this is the role that he has to uh, put himself into. He has to be the guy. Because we talked about Kai Balunga in the offseason. He was spectacular in the offseason. The thing with Kai Balunga, he is he can't create his own shot. Yeah. He's, he always has to be from, no, no, from the system, yeah. Mm, it has to be set up from a pick and roll, uh, off off ball screens, flare screens. That's where he gets his points. That's, that, that's how he scores. Chris Kuhn is different. He's a triple threat. He can drive. He can shoot. He can pass. He can manipulate the offense. He's 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 supposed to be the guy. And this is what we were talking about at the end of season eighty five when when David Defonso left. but we all said it. Chris Kuhn yeah. has to step into that role that. He's now the man. Uh, look, uh, despite the... you're right, Gab. Yep. Since Tab Baldwin took over this program, he's always had the guy in the offense. Whether it, you know, whether it's thirty, David Defonso, Fortsky, Matt Nieto, there, there's always been some guy. You now, when nothing's happening in the offense, he'll just take over. And and try and try to get a bucket for you for the team. Chris Kuhn has to be that. And I think we saw that thing. I was very happy. Chris Kuhn finally, I was I was praying to God, Lord, thank you. He's finally awake, Chris Kuhn. So Marita mo naman yung poster. Yung poster on Mike Phillips. Yeah. Mike Phillips talaga nga hataw siya the whole game. Energized yep. talaga. Yep. And I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Chris Kuhn, baby. So I'm siding with Maui. I think Ateneo is a contender. I think we have to discount that first game. That's my overreaction. That loss against NU, not counted. Not, not <laughs> counted. The real season starts now. Yeah, but but we're not, Grabe, we're not oh seeing NU. NU <laughs> we're, but, but mind you, uh, guys, uh, baka, baka si Bino biased kami, but, but we're not discounting NU's win. They, they're... they're these two games, si Gab nga overreacted on NU and we agree. NU has really been on yeah. another level, much like UP. That's something that we all agree as a fact. It's nothing against that, but uh, it's a process for the other teams. NU is a team that that has most of its score intact. I mean, they just lost John Lentamente, but most of their player, key players are still playing those key roles. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, sige, moving on. Since we're talking about the Ateneo Lasal game, I'm going to overreact uh, to a Lasal player. It's just, and you're gonna love this, Gab. It's just two games, but Waki Manuel is Draymond Green esque. That was Waki my... Manuel is Draymond <laughs> Green esque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me that. explain. Let me explain. Yeah. In the first game, we. we Actually, talked about Joaquin Manuel a bit. Sabi natin, he uh, made good account of himself. Played a good game. Tapos, I called out yung isa niyang magandang assist na bounce pass na parang no-look bounce pass. 
if you look at his stats today, he was playmaking kanina. He was a playmaking forward. I checked his stats parang nung pinost ni Pong Ducanis yung halftime stats, may five assists na siya. Parang gulat ako. Parang, wow, Joaquin Manuel, five assists. I think he ended up with only six assists. Uh, six as six or five assists. He had like six rebounds. Shot horribly. Parang 0 of 4 from 3. <laughs> had four hard fouls. Draymond Green. And, and unlimited trash talking. He was trash talking everyone. He was, ay taho, he called si um, Espinosa too small. Too, too Tapos small. Si, <laughs> at the free throw line, he was chatting si Obasa. Hindi siya pinapansin ni Obasa. I love it. Draymond Green-esque. Uh, a lot of like the little things uh, getting inside the other teams, the minds of the players of the other team and shooting horribly. So far, I think even in the first game, he hasn't uh, shot the three-point shot that well. But ho- hopefully, oh, yeah. he's supposed to be a three-point shooter. He did. Shooter, diba? so he did hopefully long pay season because he has a green light. Season. Yeah. And and last last season, I think he had like games na like twenty points siya with like four three point shots or something. But yeah. so far, because of the shooting and all the other stuff, Draymond Green of the La Salle Green Archers. Yeah, yeah Waka yeah. Manuel redemption story. Manuel. Yeah, I'm redemption all for it. I'm all for it too. <laughs> and and as I said you previously, you know, he has the confidence of. Coach Topex. Second state game. He's finished the game. He's there. Crunch time for for, for Coach Topex. Second straight game. So I think that uh, that tells you all that you need to know. He has the confidence of, of Coach Topex. Trust. Topics. Nandun talaga yung trust. Yep. Yeah. And, and to be fair, kay uh, Waki Manuel, when his sh- his three point shot wasn't going in, he he did go into the basket. Like, he was aggressive. I think he drew a couple of fouls nung nag-drive shots parang may up and under pa sure. May Eurostep like, pa siya na, no, na drive. Yeah, Eurostep pala. Eurostep, tama. Yeah, I think, I think oh, some, no, yeah. I'm also on the Waki Manuel train. Uh, if you watch yung, yung mga previous episodes naman namin. We've always said that Waki Manuel has, was talented when he was in Ateneo High School. Sir so, Jason Credo were one of my favorite players nung time ni Kai Soto and SJ Belangel. I think this is just Coach Topex has just known how to unleash Waki Manuel. Uh, when he was in high school, he was a do it all forward, power forward, small forward for the Blue Eaglets. And I think this role is perfect for him. Minus those shenanigans, some shenanigans. I think he has to be really focused <laughs> on the game. But yeah, uh, this guy rebounds the ball well. Uh, you wouldn't mind playing him sometimes as a small ball for uh, he had a lot of highlight passes. Especially in the first half, a very good pass to to Raven Cortez for an easy back bucket. Um, it's crazy. Uh, sometimes players just have to have that right coach, that right opportunity to showcase what they really can do. And I think Waki Manuel has that perfect chance. And it's I'm happy for him because this is his last playing year. He has to really showcase himself if he wants to go pro. You know. Tama naman. So to our Lasal subscribers. Shout out to Wahim Manuel. Oye, any any other overreactions that you want to share? Like, let's go back to you, Gab. Any other overreaction? Okay, I have one. I have, I have a couple more, but yung, let's go with one. It's just two games, but Mo Fati is the worst center in the UAP. He is just so bad. Uh, he is the... If you watch the first two FEU games... The only reason why they've they've come close to winning, especially in the game earlier, is that they play small and they don't have any mm-hmm. other center. Mm-hmm. They don't have any other big except for Mo Fati. And they play the best basketball when it's spread out, five out, Cholo yeah. Anuevo at center with four with four guards surrounding him. Heck, even if you play uh, either Baguno or Miguel Ona as a center, they play a, a lot better. When Mo Fati is there, he is just a non-factor. He clogs up the lane. He can't even get drop passes. He can't even get rebounds because he's so slow. And um, uh, I don't. 
sobrang naawa ako sa mga FE, sa FEU fans because they have a lot of talented guards and for some reason, of course, you have to play Mo, Mo Fati because the other team has a tall center. But he just got outplayed. I think Omar John in the first half of the game a while ago totally outplayed Mo Fati. I think Omar John had eight points in the first five minutes of that game a while ago. And uh, it just so happened in the second half, Coach Deno, same as with the first game in the fourth quarter against... Who, who were they up against? I forgot. Lasal. Uh, it's right up exclusively that, small yeah. ball. The death lineup of FU. Yep. Yung, yung death lineup, small ball talaga. And uh, they just out uh, played o- Omar John yung off the floor. So, ako talaga, this is the only way that they will win games. They, they're now 0-2. Uh, if, they're, if they are going to rack up some wins and uh, avoid the losing streak here, I think they have to sit mo mo fatty more i just he's just so bad he's been so bad he doesn't even use his height he he gets boxed out by smaller players are you kidding me man you're like seven feet you can reach on top or you can put a body on those smaller players are you kidding me and on the offensive end screen faster hinahanap siya palagi nila nila lj nila bautista to yung for a pick he, he's just so slow. He doesn't get there in time. And when by, by the time he gets there for the pick, there's like three seconds left on the shot clock. And you know, you were telling me some, no? See, SJ settled for a lot of step back threes a while ago. A big factor in that is just Mo Fati's in the paint. So Omar John is in the paint. So he can't get to the paint. So, he couldn't drive, yeah. Yep. So uh, I, uh, I'm so disappointed in, in Mohamed Fati. Uh, he's just been so bad. And he, he gets tired easily too. Uh, a few possessions into the game, he's hot. He, he, he doesn't seem to be in condition for to, to, to play the, yung, this tempo of, of the UAP. So yeah, for F, I, and I think some of our FEU subscribers or, or those who watch us agree also. No? Na, but, uh, sila, sila sila una so, comment yan. Yeah, yung, they're the first ones who pointed it out na Mo Fati just unplayable. And I agree. He is. He's the worst. My goodness. Oh, that's my overreaction. Ako, ako sabi. Nakakatawa lang gab. Reaction. Sorry, go. Sige, go Maui. Uh, yeah, well, gab- I was just gonna say, go. I was just gonna say, Maui, I had the same, I had the same overreaction. Si Gab lang medyo nega. Sabi niya, Mo Fati is the worst. I just said, it's just two games, but FEU needs to play small ball more. So that was yes. my yeah, reaction. Yeah, but think, go, Maui. I yeah, I think Gab, reaction ko lang talaga. I have to agree that Mo Fatis, the, the worst or probably a very bad FSA so far for FEU. But at least he's playing. Adama Faye, there, there are rumblings and rumors that he's not really injured and just doesn't want to play. So if you guys know, <laughs> if you can point. confirm. Is it true that Adamo Faye is not really injured but tinotopak lang, ayaw maglaro? So, I mean... USD subscribers. Yeah, uh, I think that's a that's a big thing, yung, yung parity ng, ng Torit, ng FSA. Sa, if we base it on history, the teams that have the, the FSAs that are consistent, that are good, that are the best, like Wame and Diof and, and uh, Ben and Bala, will definitely be contenders. And FEU not having a decent FSA for such a long time uh, after yung time pa ata ni Nondu wala nang pumalit or si Ojula Oj- Ojula lang no Ojula lang ang ang Ojula. naging ang pumalit pero one year lang uh, it speaks volumes as to why they've been struggling also Oy they won with Prince Orizu naman grabe ka mao <laughs> Yeah si Orizu after a few years he started to develop laki na ng katawan I think he ended up playing in uh Division 2 European League. So, congratulations to for his development. Yung, alam ko lang kay Mo Fati, no? An- 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 another thing why I'm so down on him. I didn't even like Pat 20 last year. I think that's one of the reasons you why know, you struggled because pa, you Pat 20 mo, was so bad. But Mo Fati is worse. They should have, they should bring bring back Pat 20, to be honest. Like, just the two games, I think Pat 20 
could do better. I, I I'm sorry, but I I guess I just don't want to say that because maybe they were playing against smaller teams no mga preseason. Pero may may mga moments naman si Mo Fati no preseason. So I I don't know, but he he's been really bad no first two games. I have to agree with you guys. Uh, Sana he gets better, but it's not looking Sana. good for you. I prove I just wrong, small Mo Fati. Prove us wrong, please. But it's been really bad. <laughs> Maui, Maui any other overreaction? Overreaction before we yeah. End? Uh, I think wala naman na as far as overreactions. It's really hard to to react after two games. But but we'll tackle more about the first two games when we get into power rankings. This coming week. Uh, but yeah, I'm happy. Uh, Sam mentioned kanina na this weekend, there will only be one team na unbeaten. So it's crazy. Uh, this is what we want. We had uh, one of the most craziest off-seasons in UAAP history, in my opinion. I think having a crazy season, much like this one, much like the start should be, uh, hopefully may maka-upset sa UP. <laughs> this step ladder. But uh as far as the other teams, anything can happen. I mean, Ateneo just got beat by 20 by NU, then they beat Lasal. Um, Lasal will probably bounce back or not, but we'll see. Uh, anything is possible in the UAAP. We put UST on number five, and daming galit sa akin na nilagay namin sa number five. And apparently, they are right. The UAAP, the UST team this year is not uh, that good so far these past two games, but uh, maybe they'll be better season 87, or maybe this is a classic with Orencio. They start the season slow, then ramp it up during the second half. One thing's for sure, Nick Cabanero was, I had to shout out Nick Cabanero. What a game he had against Adamson this afternoon. But that was probably, aside from the Ateneo Lasal game, that was a crazy game to watch. Uh, Nick Cabanero crazy just wanted to win. As always, he carried the load, hitting off balance three point shots to send the game to overtime. Uh, that's it. I guess I'm just hoping for really more parity and more craziness this season. Sam, have any other overreaction? Uh for me, I was gonna say it's just two games, but is UST going to lose all of their games in the first half? First half um, of the season, we, we had similar. You, you're, you're kinder. You said uh, first <laughs> round. Ako, my overreaction is just two games, but they'll be lucky to get two wins in this season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, kasi, well, well, in fairness, to Matupido Horencio, now I understand why di palala super comic co- comedic yung reaction niya na sinasabi niya ng UAP presser that basta manalo kami isa. Apparently, it can really happen to them based on their performance on these two games. They've maybe we're rough, overreacting or maybe, maybe it's really warranted. Yeah, because they, you... they lost to the two teams na nasa bottom, diba? Sa power ranking, pre-season power rankings natin. Sila yung tatlong nasa bottom. They lost SG to those Moore. two teams. So... Yeah, SJ Moore, sobrang hype tayo, but very limited minutes. Still I haven't mean, seen him. He's raw pala. I mean, I guess this is what happens also when you don't play the other UAAP teams during the whole offseason? You get caught, caught off guard. Sure, players nila are not as ready as the other teams. The value of surprise can be both a double-edged sword. And I think USC is struggling because wow. they really didn't get that reps during Profound. the offseason. And I thought that they would have more help for Nick Cabanero. But so far, it's just, just him and Chris and Manaytay. Manaytay. It's the same guys. Same so, guys as last guys. season. Si Pangilina is also yep. taking a lot of shots. So most of the usage on will go to the same to the same guys. Yeah. Voila. US. And, uh, UST, I think this is uh, just a building block for next season. So next season, yeah. sila, I think, uh, are going to be more significant. But uh, this season, ma- parang wala pa rin. It's like, just uh, two games, but Nick Cabanero will not be a UST Tiger next season. Whoa! Oh. Let's end it there. <laughs> Let's end it there. Maui preaching. The Cabanero will go pro. I think based if they don't rack up wins, 
another rough season. I, I think if he has offers, it's time for him to to really get to to play in Korea or in the B League. Yeah, it's probably gonna be a, a toss up between if, if SMC can pay him similar to his payment if he gets recruited. I mean, it's two hard seasons of recruitment of Nika Banier. So I think with the recruitment of Fortsky, yeah. with the recruitment of Paranada, those are two guard hip, guard hip, guard uh, high usage guys. I don't think, I, I think it's a possibility that Nika Banier will not be a Tiger next season. Okay, I think he so we have it there. From Boleros, we have to end it there. Maui, the, I know, the fortune teller. Uh, that's it for today's overreactions. It was a long day for us and for everyone. I think uh four four game days. I think we're gonna have another one on Saturday. Pero may mga exciting games what a start. Yeah, what a start. <laughs> what a start to the season. Uh once again. Stay tuned for the power rankings. Nimawi will be posting that soon before Saturday. Definitely will have an updated power rankings. But while you wait, don't forget to comment down below. Ano yung mga overreactions nyo? Or uh, what have you seen so far in the first two games of each team in the season? Then what are you looking forward to for Saturday? Definitely, yeah. I think I agree with Gap. It has to be UP versus NU. That is much must must watch TV. So let's don't forget comment, like, share, continue to share, and ask your friends to subscribe. We appreciate all the help. We appreciate all the comments. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Road to one thousand is complete. <laughs> road to ten thousand, naman. Oh, road to ten thousand. Kaya yan, kaya 